one of the things that we love to take a look at television ratings and television ratings, there was an oddity uh, last week. Uh, Caleb, tell us about it because I think it says something about college football and their status among the other top sports in in the United States of America. So tell me about these uh, television ratings. So this comes from Michael Mulvihill, who is an insights and analytics guy for Fox TV, Spot, Fox Sports, and Tubi. And um, basically he says that total viewing of college football is up 14% across all networks through the first four weeks of the season. And he also noted that last weekend, now NFL still was king in overall ratings, but Saturday night football, Ohio State, Notre Dame, beat NFL Sunday night football with Pittsburgh and Las Vegas. That's crazy for Saturday night football in college to beat NFL football. That's something straight out of 1945. And the reason I say out of 1945, for those who don't know historically, the reason NFL games are on Sunday was because in the 20s, they couldn't compete with college football. And that's why they don't they didn't put them on Saturdays. But now the NFL is king. Okay, so are we seeing a trend? Because I've said this before. People say, do you want to go to the NFL? Um, listen, I don't think college coaches need to go to the NFL. I think a college job is every bit as good as an NFL job and maybe more difficult nowadays with the transfer portal and all that's going on. I mean, is, is it a better job to be the head coach? What's, what's the best franchise in the NFL? The best, best like the... I would say the best run franchises oh, the are best run. Are pro, are, okay. Let's say, I think the Steelers are actually one of the best run franchises. Beautifully run. They've yeah. had like four head coaches ever in our lives. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. yeah, I think, okay. So let's say that's the best. You got the most stability, you got the most support and the owners want to win. That's the best job. What's the best job in college football? Not to get into a long debate, but pick one. I mean, the easiest job I've always said is LSU. Okay. Right. So would you rather be the head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers or LSU? I mean, I think that's debatable. I think back in the day, the money was so different. When I started doing this stuff, you were talking about millions versus hundreds of thousands as an assistant coach. I don't know that it's any better or worse to deal with millionaire athletes or if it's better to recruit. I mean, I think that it's both. Uh, I think they're both very challenging, but I don't think his one is better than the other. No, I, the only the only reason it's debatable, and you talked about this in the all season, and they're addressing this, but the work life balance for college coaches is just it's not sustainable. I mean, it's going to I, I don't know how they can mentally handle all of it if they're it's just brutal for college. I I've said it for a while I. I have always questioned the IQ of average college football coaches, but I'm not going to question the work ethic because that's a lot of work. It's a lot of brutal work. And it's, it's also a lot of work for minimal results. Dave. Okay. You get 25 members of a recruiting class. How many hours do you spend on how many prospects that don't commit in recruiting as a college coach? Oh, thousands. Of and, hours. And most of those and most of those are wasted, aren't they? Because you didn't especially at a place like Tennessee, you start with a pool of about 250 guys. I mean, that's insane when you start to think about that. And you have to call it down to about a hundred, and then you call it down to about 50. But when you start, when you're recruiting a juniors, you're talking about easily 250 guys. I once brought up a hundred, and somebody in the recruiting office laughed at me. They said, Do you think that's all that we're on? For two years, I was like, oh, my bad. And most of the guys there, of the top guys, most of the ones they're targeting aren't committing. So you're putting in all those hours, then you have to see no results. How do you mentally have the capacity to deal with that? I wouldn't have that capacity. I'm, I'm just going to be honest. If I was doing all the stuff we were doing on YouTube, all the work I'm doing every day, and I'm seeing like 10 hits a day sometimes, I would just like, I'd throw my hands up. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. And coaches so have to deal with that. Okay, so let me ask you this. Are we on the front end of a trend? Could you see college football actually being bigger 
than the NFL. And your answer will be brought to you by the Hemp House, the premier hemp dispensary online with a wide variety, great selection, and strict standards to ensure the best in CBD or Delta products. Go to Hemp House Chat with two Ts.com, Hemp House Chat.com. And they've got the big orange crunch. I know the writing's backwards, but they've got the big orange crunch. Use the promo code HOOKED and get 10% off. Tell me when you order that, and you would be awesome. Support our sponsors. So, Caleb, but could you see a day where college football is bigger than the NFL? Yes, and I'm going to tell wow. you why. Let me, I tell, let me tell you why. Think, I swear, I did not think you would say that. I thought you I didn't would think I would. Down. I didn't think I would either. But I'm going to give him a shout out real quick. I listened to uh, Shane and Terry. For those who don't know, he founded Rivals and Two Four Seven Sports, and is founded on three uh, on a podcast two weeks ago. And he said. He thinks college football is in the second inning of a rocket ship. No, not just college football, college sports is in the second inning of a rocket ship about to explode to the moon, basically. And why? I'm curious because we might have Shannon on the program. Um, why did he say that? I'm interested. So honestly, the 12 team playoff, I, I can't believe I'm in, I hate to admit it because it's not what I love. I know you're for it, but it's actually going to make college football more national. A bunch of other teams will be interested because they're like, okay, you may not make the top four. But you could certainly make a 12 team playoff if you're Washington State. And so it's going to draw um, more interest. Wait just a second. Uh, Hank Kingsley, did uh, Caleb just agree with me? Hey now. Yes, the college football playoff is going to be awesome. I'm so excited for next year. And it will be bigger than the NFL playoffs eventually. And the, you're right. So there's the regular season, too. Um, it's, it's it's not going to devalue the regular season as much as I thought it would, because while it will for the top teams, it will have more teams watching in November. On top of that, December, one of the one of the things, and actually Mike Leach said this before he passed away, rest in peace. He said one of the reasons the college football playoff model was so stupid and I never thought about it until he said it, college football is giving the whole month of December away to the NFL. They're just giving them the month of December. And finally, they're saying, wait a minute. Why are we giving them this month when we could have it or have some of it for ourselves? When I used to and cover it, it used to be so bizarre. You take a three week break. It's like it's just going. G Unit Smith says, I agree with Caleb on the message board. No, you agree with me, Caleb. Yeah, you agree with Dave. Finally, you come but around. And Dave, then, Eliza, the let, me read this, let me read this comment from SC Scott guy. I think uh, SC can make a 12 team playoff, which makes me excited for it. Yeah, that is exciting. So, programs that aren't the elite of college football, they may go in there and get, not to knock on South Carolina, but they may get go in there and get pounded, but at least they're still a factor. And all of this money is, is spread. Is there an elite college football team right now? I don't think there's one elite team like there was with Georgia two years ago. We could say Georgia plays down in their competition, but Caleb, we could also say that you've spread the wealth a little bit because of NIL and transfer portal. Look at Dave loving the redistribution of wealth over here. And y'all call me the commie, but <laughs> anyways, <laughs> um, what I, what I will say though, and there's the, here I, I, I left out the biggest reason it's going to explode. You think, okay. NIL. We're talking, Dave, you have NIL deals with Jacob and Cooper Mays. Jacob and Cooper Mays. There is within a few years, I think there's going to be a portal open for just individuals and people trying to start small businesses everywhere to utilize the NIL for college athletes. And there will be an explosion of interest in athletes that people put money on in college football. I think that's, I, I think there's going to be, I think you are in the, I think your local bar and restaurant is going to start throwing money at some college athletes and then hope they do well just to see if they can get something out of it. And I don't think it'll just be for the local team, by the way. I think they're going to start looking at national prospects and seeing if they can. Like just, you, you know, could have a BW threes. Uh, br uh, let's say Bryce Young could have been a BW threes guy. Is that what you're telling me? What is BW threes? Is that I'm sorry, Wild Buffalo Wild Wings? It used Buffalo to be BW three. Yeah. Yeah, your yeah, exactly. So your local restaurant may say, "Okay, yeah, we're not so people here are Tennessee fans, but hey, everybody knows Bryce Young. Maybe I could get Bryce Young to tweet something about me on Instagram or put something up about me on Instagram today. And I'll throw him a few bucks here and there. That's going to happen everywhere. I mean, people starting YouTube channels, your door-to-door -door salesman is like, if I could just get this guy to tweet about me for a minute and then they're going to watch the game he plays. To I think NIL, Dave, me and you watch 
hoping Jacob Warren catches a touchdown pass. Now that's not why we're watching Tennessee, but let's not let's not pretend that that's not like helping <laughs> when he does. Yeah, I mean you're absolutely right. And me and my wife have panic attacks uh, when Cooper and Jacob went out last year within like six plays of each other. <laughs> my wife looks at me and goes, oh, Lord, what are we going to do? And I was like, it'll be fine. Yes, we want those guys to do well. So how many people are going to get their hands on NIL over the next few years, Dave, that are going to be more interested in college football than they ever were before? Just from your, your – you worked in marketing. From your knowledge in business, how, how big is that going to get? Huge. And you're right, Travis. Only old people still call it BW3. <laughs> 